Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Jack Leslie unveiling ceremony. Thank you for being here. We're not starting quite yet. It's a 12 o'clock start. But if, if you are one of our supporters who paid £100 or more into the crowdfunder, then please come and take your seat. We also uh, welcome Jack Leslie's family who are here and some of our VIP guests. And I see we have some schools here. Thank you for waiting so patiently. Who do we have here? Stoke Damnall School are here. Holy Cross are here. We did an assembly at Holy Cross. St. Andrews are here. I recognize the children from St. Andrews. Very well behaved in the assembly. Well done. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. You just stand there for me. Yeah. Rich is That's it, just like that. Okay. That All right. So keep, keep the mic.
Good morning and welcome. We're at Home Park today for the unveiling of Jack Leslie's statue. It's been a three year process to get to this point, but in just a moment's time, just behind me, Jack Leslie's statue will be unveiled. As we know, Jack played 400 times for Argyle. He was our captain, he was our leader, our hero. In 13 years at Home Park, he scored 137 goals. It was a goal scoring record that didn't go unnoticed. Over the next hour, we're going to be hearing from Jack's family and those who knew him best, and of course, see Jack in all of his glory. Ladies and gentlemen, we're a few minutes away from the, from the start. We're starting officially at 12. The event is being live streamed. I'm very grateful to the football club and PL1 events for helping us with that. So be on your best behaviour, please, and don't forget to cheer and clap at the appropriate moments, especially if I make a joke. Um, the running order is going to be that at 12 o'clock we'll do a short introduction. I'm Greg Foxsmith from the campaign, and myself and uh, Matt Tiller, we set up the Jack Leslie campaign. We're delighted that we're at this stage today. On the stage to our left, you can see Big Scoop. Big Scoop is going to be performing a short piece for us uh, shortly. Uh, the three granddaughters of Jack Leslie are here, along with many other family members. Can we all just give a round of applause for the family for being here? Some of them have travelled huge distances and you'll hear from Les on behalf of the granddaughters a little while. You're also going to hear a few words from uh, Argyle legend Ronnie Mojé. Let's hear it for Ronnie. 
And uh, also here we've got uh, an Argyle legend who played for Plymouth Argyle and tomorrow's opponents, Accrington Stanley. Welcome, Romy Boku. And thank you to Paul Hart, who's brought quite a few legends here today. Ultimately, when we've done those very short speeches, there'll be the unveiling of the statue. And to do that, we wanted the uh, school children to give us a countdown from five, but I wondered if we could do a quick practice of that now. I know we've got uh, a lot of schools here represented, and I want them to lead us. So this is just a practice. We're not going to be pulling the veil off now. But kids, can you do me a countdown from five together? Five. Does that sound okay? We could hear that. And then, and then it's, and then when we do it, we'll ask everyone to join in on that countdown. But we know that the the school children are leading us on that, and they've done absolutely brilliantly. So this is the three-minute warning. So it's the last chance for um, family members to make their way towards us. VIP members, thank you all for being here. Uh, calling, calling our sculptor Andy Edwards to the stage. also have representatives here uh, from Jack's first club, Barking FC. I'd like to welcome uh, Rob and his wife Debs from Barking FC. They supported the campaign. And Rob is holding up there an one of the early versions of a maquette. That's not how our statue will look. He's not giving too much away. But it's a great, a great early work, and that's one of Andy's works. Thank you, Rob. You've come a long way from Barking. Also from the East End, we have a, de a delegation from West Ham Football Club, where uh, Jack finished. Well, well, uh, welcome. Let's give a round for West Ham and Colton Cole. I can see to my left that we are um, very grateful to have uh, supporting us and showing their support uh, the Lord and Lady Mayoress, or, or Lord, Lord Mayor and Deputy uh, Mayor, I should say. Um, so, yeah, other way around. You know what I meant. Um, they're in all their bling, um, uh, but we're really grateful that they're here representing the city and civic pride, which is what this statue represents. So thank you and welcome. Um, they also, very kindly, as many of you did here, contributed to the campaign. We really appreciate everyone who did that. And uh, this is like an Oscar speech now. I'm just filling in the time, guys. But there's so many people to thank. Uh, and in the front row here, I see someone who gave us a lot of advice at the start of our campaign and supported us on social media uh, and has really been a, a very staunch supporter of our campaign. It's uh, MP Luke Pollard. Thank you, Luke, for being here. I think we've got one minute left, so it would be remiss if I didn't mention the support that Plymouth Argyle Football Club have provided, many of whom are behind us here. And I include in Plymouth Argyle Football Club, Plymouth Argyle Women's Football Club. And in particular, I mentioned Tiana Campbell, who we as a campaign sponsor. Welcome, guys, and thank you so much. This is the best start to a season for Plymouth Argyle since 1929-30 season when Jack Leslie led the team to promotion. Looks like we're back on track. Okay, I think we'll start 
that, that interrupts my long list of thank yous, so I'll just say thank you to everyone I have forgotten to thank, but should. You know who you are, and uh, a bit more on that later. But we'll start now. So thank you um, for being here. Um, effectively, we are so delighted to... Um, Please, Thank you. <laughs> We're going to start with the, the introduction, which is how Jack Leslie came to Plymouth. He came from the East London town of Canning Town. He joined Plymouth Argyle in 1921. His exploits at Barkingtown Football Club got him the professional contract here. He had had offers from Chelsea, Tottenham and West Ham to sign him, but he was lured here to Plymouth by legendary manager Bob Jack, showing him postcards of a sunny Plymouth hoe, and the warm delights, and also an extra 10 shillings a week. As you know, because his stats are right up there in the all-time Argyle legends, Jack Leslie played 400 games for Plymouth Argyle. He scored 137 goals, and he captained Argyle to its highest league position to date, although, as I say, watch this space. His partnership with another legend, Sammy Black, was famous across the country, and we are proud that Sammy is also pictured on the plinth in a stunning photograph from the Times in 1932. Matt and I never saw Jack play, but there is somebody here who did see Jack play. Uh, welcome, Charlie, 96 years of age at the front, who spoke to us earlier, and remember Jack Leslie and Sammy Black and we'll share his memories with you later. What we do know is that Jack Leslie was an outstanding technician. Jack Leslie was not a fan of speeches and small talk. <laughs> he was a man of action, a man of deeds. There we go. Um, will that make the edit? <laughs> Thanks. Right, I'll try and di divert the attention away from the uh, work on that uh, veil. We'll finish up by saying that we know Jack was an outstanding player. His stats speak for themselves. In, in 1933, the Daily Mail said... Had he been white, he would have been a certain England international. And that, of course, follows 1925, when he was the first black footballer to be selected to play for England. It's a significant moment, and this statue doesn't just recognise his significant prowess as an Argyle player, but more importantly remembers what happened to Jack Leslie in 1925, when he was denied his chance to play because of the colour of his skin. Now, many people have asked us, well, what do the FA have to say about this? What do the FA say now? Well, we have an answer to that question. Matt. So at the start of our fundraising campaign, the, the FA supported us and, and donated to us. But last week, that took a step forward. As Debbie Hewitt, the chairwoman of the FA, acknowledged Jack as the first black player to be selected for England. Thank you. <laughs> Debbie has, has genuinely engaged with us and, and the family. She's read the evidence and taken time to understand the story. And today we can share this statement from her. Jack Leslie is a true football legend who, through his own adversity, has positively shaped attitudes and behaviours to identify and remove discrimination from football. The FA is awarding Jack 
a posthumous honorary cap. to recognise his unique contribution and set of, set of circumstances to right that historical wrong. I had the privilege of meeting Leslie, Jack's granddaughter, at a recent international game at Wembley, where we had the opportunity to recognise the family's determination, courage and resilience to have Jack's story told. And through the efforts of Leslie and her sisters, Lynn and Jill, to change perceptions in football and more broadly in society. We have made progress in recent years to ensure that English football is more diverse and inclusive and a game for all. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to Jack and to his family for comprehensively and consistently driving positive change through football. We are pleased to support this campaign and to recognise Jack's career. It's been a long time coming, but we're overwhelmed and delighted that it has. And now, um, I'd like to welcome an Argyle legend that both Greg and I have seen play, particularly at 1996 at Wembley, scoring, yes, yeah, absolutely, that goal against Darlington, Ronnie Moshe. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Greg's asked me to make it really, really brief because he knows that sometimes I could go off at a tangent. So I was up trying to put into words and trying to do Jack Leslie's justice in how I felt about his, um, his legacy. And every time I kept changing it, my partner, my girlfriend said, stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Because, you know, I'd go off on a tangent. So anyway, I just wanted to read some words that I felt needed to be said. And I feel like Jack Leslie would have liked this. First of all, Matt and Greg, two legends. Co-founders. Co Thank you for a fantastic campaign. I thank you for your bravery, tenacity, time and effort. This shows, this shows what can be achieved when good people, fans and supporters can come together. Thank you, my beloved Argyle, for the support given to this campaign and your help in saving a big part of our black history. The fans called and the club responded. A cheeky chappy, I was, I thought, I was the daddy of the Argyle black footballers. The most famous one, obviously the Wembley goal, and the best looking. <laughs> yeah, until, yeah, Jack Leslie came onto the scene. As soon as I saw his picture, I knew I was toast and my crown was slipping. More games played, more goals scored, and looking like a young Denzel Washington. What chance did I have? <laughs> but on a serious note, I'm disappointed Jack himself couldn't be here to see this honour, because I'm sure Jack would be very humbled and grateful, and he would want this honour to be a representation of how football was able to change hearts and minds, how diversity was able to conquer racism, let us consider the lessons we have learned from the past to make a brighter future. And last but not least, one more minute. I'm sure Jack would have said to me, Ron, I like your mu Muriel, but my statue is better. 
And with a wink and a smile, he would have said, who's the daddy now? Yeah. So, listen. So, John, Francis, Leslie, we salute you. A true Argyle legend and a football pioneer. Thank you, Ronnie Mojé. I know he described himself as the best-looking black footballer at Argyle, but I see Dwight Marshall's here and many other legends as well, so there's some competition. Thank you, Dwight. Um, right, we're going to move on to uh, a slightly different take now. You've heard from a football legend. I want to introduce a legend of spoken word, a spoken word artist who has travelled from London today to perform for you his piece, about Jack Leslie. Please give it up for Big Scoop. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone is well. It's a major honor for me to be here today. Um, I'm going to be performing a piece that um, I recently performed uh, on a show called uh, Sporting Words, where I commemorate Jack Leslie. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time but I'm going to go straight into it. Now, a lot of you in here know who he is, but for those that don't, what I ask is please just try and hear. Because I may not be a speaker salesman, but I'm putting you one to a pioneer. This man excelled in a world of football, which took his team to a higher tier. In a sense, he was held back, but still showed when you stay grounded that you're going to take off like Ryanair. In 1901, he was born in Cannon Town. But his first team was barking. He knew how to score, had pace, and was a wizard at passing. As a defender, you couldn't daydream because he was a nightmare marking. I mean, this man was no joke. But if he was on your team, you was laughing. And when he left barking, he had silverware. But he was just getting started. You could say that he came from the mud because right there's where the seed was planted. He wasn't just known for his skill. But when he joined Plymouth Argyle, that seed uprooted and we watched him grow in the field. At Plymouth Argyle, a star was born. A black professional footballer in those days wasn't the norm. In fact, he was the only one. And that fact just can't be ignored. He played in the 1920s, and that fact still has me floored. Because he took his window of opportunity and used it to open doors. In 1925, he got that England call. And I'm sure he was loving the fact. But what should have been a joyous occasion was about to be taken back. His name would soon disappear from the records. And the irony is he never heard Jack. But we're talking the 1920s, he got denied because he was black. And the truth is, he could have called it a rap, but he chose to stay in his lane and keep his career on track. This man is an unsung hero whose life has such an impact. And for that, I take my hat off to him because he really should have been capped. But he still left his mark and showed his world-class pedigree. He retired a legend at Plymouth Argyle. It was there he cemented his legacy. And the one thing testament to that fact is the boardroom is now named in his memory. You see, this is a man that needs to be recognized, but let his legacy be a reminder that race should never be weaponized. He played in the days before broadcasting, but since then, the revolution's been televised. Jack Leslie. Big scoop, ladies and gentlemen. We were blown away when we heard that. So uh, when Greg and I started this campaign, we thought, I wonder what Jack's family will think of this, um, and what will they be like? Uh, well, we've spent a lot of time with his granddaughters, Leslie, Lynn, and Jill, and not only were they instantly and unanimously supportive, but also we disco soon discovered very lovely. Their memories of Jack, their granddad, their granddad spurred us on, and so. We'd like to invite Leslie to talk to you now. Good afternoon. I'm Leslie. I'm the eldest of Jack Leslie's granddaughters. 
I am immensely proud and very emotional to be here today. This occasion means so much for us that at long last our granddad is getting the recognition he deserves and the fact that he's now been awarded a posthumous cap is the icing on the cake. Thank you all for being here today. I'm just so proud. Thank you. Thank you, Les. And Les, speaking on behalf of the three granddaughters, we're delighted to see all of you on the stage and all the other many members of Jack's family who are here. Thank you so much for the support you've given to us. But I think it's now time um, that we ask you, Les and Lynn and Jill, to get ready and uh, in position because we want to see the statue. Let's do it. Shall we do it? And thank you for the guys who so selflessly volunteered themselves to hold that veil back in place. <laughs> I'll, wait for, I'll wait for a signal when all is ready before we ask the school children to start our countdown. So. Before we do the countdown, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who contributed to this project. More than 2,000 people donated on Crowdfunder and um, everyone who uh, contrib contributed a huge amount, not, not just money, but also their time and their talent are recognised on, on this plinth, on the paving around it. We thank them hugely uh, and there are many, many more people who gave their time in many different ways. So we really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so very much and thank you for turning out today. Yes, I'm told we're ready. So, uh, children, you know what to do. We practiced this earlier, but this time we want everyone to join in. Five, 